Welcome to Academic Management Articles channel, where you can explore the latest management articles with less effort and less time. Today's article is a paradox of stability and a change, a case study. It's an empirical research that has conducted by Hai Fen Lin, Ding Chan Chu, Li Li, and He Huai Chen from School of Economics and Management, Dalian University of Technology from Dalian in China. This article published in Chinese Management Studies Journal in 2020, and this is a citation for the article. Let's begin with abstract. Abstract consists of five parts. The first part is purpose. This research is conducted to answer two questions. The first one is how an organization pursues stability and change simultaneously. And the second one is how stability and change contradictorily enable each other to promote the development of an organization. The second part in abstract is design, methodology, and approach. This research is a case study on the strategic and the structural change of sign complex in China. Researchers applied multiple approaches during data collection to meet the criteria for trustworthiness. And data analysis went through a five-step progress. The third part in the abstract is findings. The results confirm the paradox of stability and the change in three points. Stability enables the change by supplying security and consistency, offering reserved knowledge and skills, and enabling commitment and the provision of resources for a better realization of the change. Second, change enables a firm to set up a new state of stability through the variable mechanisms such as trial and error and exploration activities. The nature of organizational change is to help an organization reach a new stable stage with higher efficiency and that organizational development relies on the paradoxical effects of both stability and change. The fourth part in the abstract is research limitations and implications. Researchers mentioned that findings need to be further confirmed through the investigation of more organizations, other stable mechanisms, such as habits, tight coupling, commitments, control and low variance, other variable mechanisms such as research, mindfulness, redundancy, and opinions, cross-level or cross-department changes which struggle with each other for resources. And they also mentioned that future research may need to conduct a more in-depth examination of the system of change. The fifth part and the last one in the abstract is originality and value. Here researchers chose the contribution of this article in three points. First, the findings offer insights for further re research and implications for management practices in a Chinese context. The findings extend the existing paradox theory by further revealing how stability and a change enable each other and offer a paradoxical perspective to look into the nature of organizational change and organizational development. The results remind managers to rethink the relationship between stability and change to factor these coexisting concepts into their decision making and to accept, understand, and use this paradoxical relationship to realize synergetic effects for the firm. Now let's go deeper into the introduction part. Researchers here provide us with an overview for the basis that this article is built upon. And we can summarize that introduction in three points. The first one is the need for stability and change. Researchers mentioned that before it is, 
when the global environment was relatively stable and the pace of a change was comparatively slow, organization tended to adopt incremental strategies with greater emphasis on continuity and stability. And we can say that development of organizations relies on a stable, regular, and a predictable context where employees are able to understand and trust the organizational concept and settings, and where they can undertake tasks in a highly efficient manner. In this context, organizations are able to concentrate their resources and attention on obtaining key goals. But an overemphasis on stability may lead to inflexibility, mindfulness, de-skilling, and even competency traps. As competition intensifies and globalization accelerates, organizations increasingly rely on uncertainty, novelty, unpredictability to file the best plans and upset existing orders. Now firms realize the critical contribution of a change to the firm long-term success. Such change assists in increasing firm productivity, improving quality, and achieving an enduring firm competitive advantage for continuous development. So we can conclude that stability and change are essential as the stability provide or ensures high efficiency while change confirms long-term development. Second point is the traditional dualism view of stability and change. The traditional dualism view, seeing stability and change as mutually exclusive elements, as in an invariable either-or situation, this, this dualism view advocates a contingency series and either or approaches to handle this paradoxical situation and to reduce the negative effects of the dual coexistence. This view remains dominant in theoretical and empirical research and as a guide for practice. The third point is a paradoxical view of stability and change. And here researchers give two examples. The first one is about McDonald's. That company which well known for standardization as a stable mechanism. McDonald's also pursuing a change by adapting its menus, defining its marketing mix based on some aspect of the local cultures, looking for new marketing tools and even exploring new business models. And on the other hand, many corporate giants who have become well known through innovation and change like Toyota, General Motors, also rely on an institution's rules and processes as a staple mechanisms. Also, we have to mention that the literature has implicitly recognized that stability and change jointly contribute to organizational effectiveness and has recently explored some of their complementarities. Also, research on organizational routines reflect that routines actually instill flexibility in the face of changing external conditions. Another researcher called Vargun introduced an alternative duality view that depicts the stability and the change as conceptually distinct and contradictory but also mutually enabling. From that point, researchers mentioned that the literature is still contains gaps in discussing how stability and the change contradictorily rely on each other. So paradox actually refers to both contradiction and interdependence. And the contradiction is obvious and has been widely accepted, but in this research, the focus will be on the interdependent relationship between stability and the change. Based on the previous overview, researchers identify three questions to answer through that research. The first one, how does the stability support organizational change? And how does the change enable the recreation of new stability? And how does the stability and the change mutually promote the development of an organization? Alternatively, what is 
the nature of organizational change and organizational development. Now let's go to the literature review. Researchers here review the literature in three basic points. First one, definition of paradox. Second, the lesson view of stability and the change and paradoxical view of stability and the change. Let's begin with definition of paradox. The first point in that part, it's talking about Eastern and Western philosophy. Paradox is a concept with roots in both Eastern and Western philosophy, and the philosophers stressed and mentioned the contradictory and the interdependence between oppositional elements. The second point it's about using paradoxical lens in organization science. And here we have many definitions that management scholars introduced like Lewis, who defines paradox as contradictory yet interrelated elements that seem logic in isolation, but absurd and irrational when appearing simultaneously. And we have Smith and Lewis regard the paradox as contradictory yet interrelated elements that exist simultaneously and persist over time. And also we have Chad et al. define paradox as persistent contradiction between interdependent elements. These definitions identify two characteristics of paradox, contradiction and interdependence. The second point in the literature review is the dualism view of stability and change. Here there is two basic points that should explore in that part. The first one is the traditional dualism view. The traditional dualism view regarded stability and change as opposites and separate, two essential but largely incompatible and mutually exclusive elements in our organization. They each struggle for scarce resources. Each tends to set up a closed, self-reinforcing system, and each has different requirements for a high-level organizational design and management mindset, in which the two contradictory elements cannot be accepted. The second point is about exploitation and exploration. Researchers introduce these two terms or concepts as equivalent for stability and the change. According to Marsh, exploration includes things captured by terms such as search, vibration, risk-taking, experimentation, play, flexibility, discovery, innovation, while exploitation includes such things as refreement, choice, production, efficiency, selection, implementation, and execution. Similarly, as Atohin Gema explains, exploitation hones and extends current knowledge, seeking greater efficiency and improvements, while exploration entails the development of new knowledge, experimenting to foster the variation and novelty. Accordingly, exploitation is closely related to stability, reflecting contamination of direction, local refinement, and extensions of existing competencies, technologies, and paradigms, and the reliability of experience. Alternatively, exploration is closely related to change, reflecting innovation and the dynamic long-term efficiency. According to this dualism view, exploitation and exploration tended to maintain internal coherence and exclusion and organizations can only support one concept at a time. However, an organization that over engages in a change or exploration may suffer from the cost of experimentation, while an organization that over engages in stability or exploitation may be trapped in suboptimal stable equilibrium. When firms seek to balance exploration and exploitation, within a discrete field of organizational activity, 
the traditional way of establishing organizational separation between exploring and exploiting units or engaging in temporal separation may undermine organizational performance. But firms that balance exploration and exploitation across domains gain in profit and market value. The third point in the literature review is the paradox, paradoxical view of stability and change. Here we will discuss three points. The first one is paradoxical relationship between stability and change. A paradoxical lens suggests a more integrated relationship depicting stability and change as naturally constituted each pole consisting the seeds of its opposite and ontologically inesperable, such that one does not exist without the other. Fargon particularly conceptualized stability and change as dualistic forces that not only are complementary but also define one another. Chade et al. state that stability only occurs when the system makes constant changes in response to the variability in the environment. Organizations can only accomplish variability when they have clear, staple rules and routines. According to Lewis, the relationship between stability and the change is much like the two sides of a coin, naturally constituted and ontologically inesperable. He and Wong regard the interdependence between stability and change as the core for the long-term success of an organization. Andrew Paulus and Lewis explain that exploitation and exploration naturally reinforce each other through interactively supporting organizational learning. Without exploration, there would not be enough knowledge for exploiting, and without exploitation, there would not be enough knowledge for building up the absorptive capability and stimulating, stimulating attempts. The second point is stable and change mechanisms. Variable mechanisms such as diversity experimentation not only enable change and innovation, but also, but are also instrumental in maintaining stability, particularly amid persistent permutations. Conversely, staple mechanisms and institutions such as routines and control while still supporting stable outcomes also promote adaptability, innovation and exploration. Therefore, attending stability, attaining stability or change requires both staple and variable mechanisms. The third point is Vargun four types. Vargun classifies the relationship between stability and change into four different types. Exploitation, stability, exploration, change, and change enables the stability and stability enables the change. In the change enables the stability and the stability enables the change relationships and the big indicating the interdependence of stability and the change. Stability is viewed as an outcome of change or its medium. This table summarizes the difference between paradoxical and dualism view. And it to be noticed, the paradoxical view is not a replacement of the dualism view but a new perspective to handle conflicting elements and look into the nature of organizational change and development. Here we can find views, the lesson view and the paradoxical view. And we have, here we can see basic ideas as the lesson views, stability and change are two opposites, largely incompatible and mutually exclusive elements in an organization. Here we can see stability and the change are conceptually distinct and contradictory, yet also mutually enabling. 
Now let's talk about the methodology that researchers have applied in that research. Methodology consists of five parts. The first one is the case study. This paper adopts an interpretive and exploratory case study. But why case study? Case studies are effective for theory development as they are rich empirical descriptions of particular instances of a phenomena and emphasize the real world context in which phenomena occur and form the basis for inter inductive theory development. As the theory building process is necessary, embedded in rich empirical data and requires cycling among case data, emerging theory and extant literature building theory from cases is likely to produce theory that is accurate, interesting, and testable. Moreover, case studies have been extensively adopted in the field of paradox research. The second point, as Yen suggests, when addressing questions of how or why case studies would be more suitable. In this research, it's a how question. The second part in the methodology is the case subject, and we will explore two points, the company sign complex and the lead industry. They have mentioned why they choose the lead industry for two reasons. The first one, because this industry has achieved abundant R&D technology breakthroughs. The second reason, most firms in this industry have improved their efficiency through organizational innovations. In the second point, researchers explore why they choose to study that topic inside science complex. But before that, let's, uh, let's talk about Sign Complex as a company. Sign Complex has founded in 2006. Have ISO 9001 2015 certificate and is considered a state level high tech company. Sign Complex not only serves the domestic market but also have taken a large share in the international market. Sign Complex, with a sales volume of $70 million and over $20 million of profit in 2017, owns more than 200 planets and explores and exports 90%, 95% of its products to 83 countries and areas around the world. Now the company enjoys a high reputation throughout the international market, especially in the Europe and the USA. In summary, we can say that Sign Complex is a successful international firm that has not only been able to offer products with high efficiency to ensure high profit, but also has been able to flexibly cater to the high requirements from developed markets. Now let's talk about the three reasons that make researchers believe that Sign Complex was appropriate for their research. The first one, Sign Complex offered the researchers a good opportunity to explore paradox in the context of change. And Sign Complex experienced a development process with three important changes. First, from a foreign trader to a manufacturer. The second, from a project diversification strategy to a specification strategy with transformation from a line functional structure to a divisional structure. And the third, from an original design manufacturer to an original brand manufacturer. And the second reason that through each developmental change design complex was able to reach a new state of stability which indicates that the success of sign complex relied on process change and stability. The third reason sign complex offered the researchers is a chance 
to conduct an in-depth investigation into the firm, especially the process of its strategic change. This table represents the main changes in sign complex. As we see here, there are three changes. We will focus on the second change, transformation from a product diversification strategy to a specification strategy from 2013 to 2015. Set up a divisional structure. Each division has its own departments and a warehouse. Set up a headquarters with eight departments and change it process, business processes, responsibilities, functions, and concepts. The third part in methodology is case description. In case description, we have three basic points. The first one is a second change. This research is going to focus on the second change, as we mentioned and explained in the previous table. Second point, is the three product categories in sign complex. Sign complex implemented new measures to enlarge its market and consequently it increased its products to over 300 categories, which led to higher costs and more difficulty in product management and R&D specialization. So, Sign Complex decided to shift its strategy from product diversification to specification strategy. The company kept approximately 100 products that generated large sales and profits or that had greater potential. Then the company divided these products into three categories. Strip profiles, panel lights, tube spot lights. The third point is a strategic and structural change in the company. Because of these changes in products categories, the company decided to set up a divisional structure with three independent divisions, namely strip profile division, panel lights division, tube spot lights division, and then an overseas division for marketing. Each division with a general and a vice general manager, and each division has its own department of R&D, production, purchasing, administration, and the quality control and the head warehouse. Sign Complex also set up a headquarters organization with eight departments, including finance, marketing, quality controlling, customs and products, R&D, human resources, and the purchasing department. The fourth part is data collection. And here we have five points to discuss. The first one is period. Researchers collected data from July 2017 to January 2018. The second point, multiple approaches. Researchers adopted multiple approaches, including semi-structured interviews, archival data, and obser observation. Semi-structured interviews provided most of the information concerning how stability and the change enabled each other, while the archival materials and the natural observations provided background and expanded their understanding by offering insights that clarified the interview findings. The third point is about the semi-structured interviews. Researchers conducted interviews in three sets of 27 interviews, including 21 individual interviews, five telephone interviews, and one group interview. In the interviews, researchers encourage informants to go deeply into details. Before each set of interviews, an overview protocol was designed with major themes in mind. During the interviews, questions were not asked in any specific order, but were governed instead by the actual situation. The fourth point is archival data. Researchers supplemented the interviews with over 100 documents mainly 
offered by the Human Resources Devo Department, which was not only responsible for human resources issues, but also served as the company office for handling everyday management issues and for setting up, implementing, and evaluating rules, regulations, and processes. These documents provided information on sign complex market introduction, R&D process, material purchasing process, material checking process, structural change reports, employees information, rules and regulations, meeting notes, and so on. Also, the R&D department provided archival data on project introduction, new project development, and technologies. Researchers also gathered articles, made a report, stories, and web materials regarding sign complex and the lead industry. The last point and the fifth point is observation. During the visit to its sign complex in July 26 and 27 from 2017, researchers observed lead products were produced at workshops and how end projects were tested in the lighting lab and the EMC lab and the Ripality lab and how lights were used to decorate a room while waiting for interviews and walking around the firm researchers took notes of their informal observations. The first part in methodology is data analysis and coding. Throughout the data analysis and coding techniques such as constant comparison and content analysis were used. The second point, it's about the process. Data analysis went through a five-step process. First, data was were collated and sorted with raw data transformed by recording and transcribing interviews collating field notes and writing up observations. Second, a descriptive case about sign complex and its mainly changes was written as described in the previous section. Third, when exploring deeply into the concept of a strategic change, researchers identify three main mechanisms of stability, institutions, processes, and organizational routines. Institutions are composed of cultural, cognitive, normative, and regulative elements that together with associated activities and resources provide stability and meaning to social life. The processes reflect the whole process through which tasks that are not exhibited in formal documents but commonly accepted by participants are finished. Organizational routines are defined as repetitive, recognizable patterns of interdependent actions involving multiple actors. These tasks consist of common understandings, also referred to a shared schemata. Therefore, in institutions and processes here represent explicit and observable stable mechanisms, while organizational routines reflect implicit and unobservable cognitive mechanisms of stability. Fourth, researchers identify specific exploration and innovation activities as variable mechanisms. And fifth and the last step in that process, a framework showing the paradoxical relationship between stability and the change was set up. Now, let's talk about the case analysis. The first part in the case analysis is a staple mechanisms set up before the change. And here we are going to talk about institutions, processes, and organizational routines before the change. First, in institutions. In institutions where, which were established for the line functional structure and the product diversification strategy in the early period, 
efficiently regulated the behavior of, of employees to explore more projects. These institutions were the organizational level systems, workshop department, lab, lab level rules, regulations, and instructions, and individual level requirements. Before the change, sign complex set up specific instructions for testing and equipment operation for each lab. Second is processes. Before the change, sign complex operated through a general business process consisted of many steps. Similarly, sign complex set up a stable production flow involving many steps. So each project had to go through that process which was a high and stable quality controlled process. Additionally, Sign Complex created an R&D process starting from market analysis to industrial design, evaluation, improvement, proofing, test, sampling, evaluation, second round trial production, and the mass production. The company also had a high, had a quality, control process involving product definition, contract approval, product design and planning, trial production and approval, mass production, quality guarantee assurance and sales and service. These processes and flows facilitated the accomplishment of the firm tasks. Third point is about organizational routines. Before the change, reflecting the existence of common understandings or shared schemata for the firm's general task of developing and providing best lights for more customers around the world, the staff of Sign Complex worked together to fulfill tasks. This common understanding was set up by top managers and then delivered top down to first line employees. Based on this common understanding that gave priority to the quality of products and the service, all participants engaged in R&D, production, marketing or management formed a set of mutually coherent action dispositions towards the products and the service quality. In summary, before the change, sign complex was in a period of stability and had established institutions, processes, and organizational routines which guaranteed its high efficiency. The second point in case analysis is stability enabled the change. And this is the second phase, the phase of the change. And it's consisted of three points. The first one, institutions enable the change by supplying security and consistency. At the beginning of the change process, Sign Complex retained most of its established institutions to reduce the perceived uncertainty of the employees, to avoid internal chaos, and to ensure the continuity of the firm. Also, the responsibilities and the functions for the newly established divisions, the division managers and the vice managers and the departments under each division were redefined. These responsibilities were actually extracted from those from the existing institutions. In the new strategy and the structure, the business divisions gained more autonomy in decision making. while while the headquarters organization was responsible for evaluating their performance. Through negotiations, the divisions and headquarters organization set up all indicators, standards, and methods for evaluation. Similarly, other new systems, rules, and regulations and instructions were set up based on existing ones, with new, with few brand new ones established. Therefore, this strategic and structural change did not fundamentally transform the existing institutions but relied on them. The institutions were able to reduce the perceived uncertainty of the employees and their anxiety when confronted with the change. 
this enabled employees to trust the organization and to continue to explore new tasks. We can draw a conclusion that existing institutions can perceive group autonomy and freedom, supply security and consistency and provide references for improvement, which enable change rather than constraining it. The second point, processes supported the change with reserved knowledge and skills. Process recreation is the core of sign complex strategic and structural change. Before the change, the overall business process was order reception, material, purchase, sample development, contract signing, mass production, delivery, settlement, and after sale service. While the new process turned out to be order reception, overall design in headquarters, task breakdown in headquarters, product design and development in each division, sample production, contract signing by headquarters, mass production, purchase and stocking by headquarters, delivery, settlement and after sale service. Additionally, in the new structure R&D department were set up in post headquarters organization and in the divisions, but were defined differently. R&D department in headquarters worked with the marketing department for industrial design and overall proposal establishment, while the R&D departments in the divisions were responsible for developing certain products. Additionally, purchase departments were set up in both the headquarters organization and in the divisions. The former was for purchasing end products from the divisions, while the latter was established for purchasing raw materials and accessories. The new process worked well because it maintained most existing lengths and details, thereby enabling the firm to maintain abundant capabilities, knowledge, skills, and principles for performing tasks. The first point, the third point, organization routines help to release existing or objectives and resources to support change. The existing organization routines reflecting both a common understanding of the general task that is developing and providing the best lights for more customers around the wallet and the coherent action dispositions of working together to realize the task offered essential support to this strategic and structural change by enabling commitment and providing resources. The purpose of the change was to further the firm pursuit of high quality. During the change, the common understanding of high quality among top managers determined the definition of the divisions, the relationship between the divisions and headquarters, the relationship between the divisions and the performance standards and targets of the divisions. In addition to the traditional indicators, Sign Complex also set up research and development competitiveness indicators such as the new product development cycle, a new product number, and a marketing respond to enrich its high quality concept. The change was intended to enhance the R&D capability of each business division and unit all divisions to work together for the overall target. Actually, this common understanding helped to release top managers from their responsibility to handle only daily issues and enabled them to embrace the unique goal of high quality and to consequently allocate core resources to support activities of improving quality. Similarly, other managers also brought their schemata for high quality and set up coherent action dispositions to new positions and for the employees in the divisions involved in the change fostered the establishment of new understandings and cohesive actions. This helped decision, divisions decrease the exploration time 
involved in a change, remove pressure, and reduce the perceived uncertainty of divisional managers, enabling the divisional commitment and resources to support the accomplishment of the firm core tasks. For the first line employees, this strategic, strategic and structural change meant the relocation of workshops, labs, or production lines to reduce their anxiety and insecurity. They serve to turn novelty into familiarity through an ontological transfer, which helped them in understanding the similarity between the new context and the existing context by mapping categories and the relations from the existing context to a new one. This helped individual employees to remove perceived uncertainty, to better understand the new tasks and to commit themselves and their resources toward the accomplishment of their individual tasks. In summary, sign complex strategic and structural change depended on the establishment of stable mechanisms, including explicit institutions and processes and implicit organizational routines. These stable organisms, these stable mechanisms helped individuals and groups save cognitive resources, reduce the need for trial and error in solving problems, and enabled the completion of routine tasks, non-routine tasks, and even the pursuit of innovation. These stable mechanisms enabled the change by supplying security and consistency to ensure the continuity of supply of science complex, offering reserved knowledge and skills and enabling commitment and the provision of resources to better facilitate the realization of the change. Now, we will talk about change enabled the recreation of a new stable state and we have three points first one is about to change enable the recreation of new institutions when tasks were repeatedly performed and accompanied by continuous interactions the institutions newly established in previous phases were enriched and improved a mature general memorandum of association clear division responsibility and function descriptions, division management systems, department responsibility and function descriptions, department regulations, and an improved performance evaluation system were recreated. However, when tasks were performed in the new structure, this new system presented numerous problems, especially in the con connections between the headquarters and divisions. Through repeated attempts and exploration, the development cycle of each product and its production volume and the cycle became, became clearer, and the communication between headquarters and divisions became smoother. The divisions were able to precisely arrange their activities, progress, and delivery. On the divisional and individual levels through trial and error activities and exploration in performing tasks, the establishment of the management systems and regulations became mature in composing more detail. Consequently, a new series of institutions were finally set up through the trial and error activities and exploration that occurred during the change. Second, change enabled the recreation of new processes. Through strategic and structural change, the processes of sign complex became more reliable and efficient. Overall, the processes were consolidated with more detailed. Were consolidated with more detail, clearer responsibility, and particularly smoother links between headquarters and the divisions and among the divisions. Becoming individ involved in activities 
leading to more flexible cooperation between headquarters and the divisions. The divisions engaged in offering ideas for overall design began to participate in negotiations and started to provide guidance for product usage. Moreover, for each link, clear sub-processes were set up for performing tasks. Similarly, in implementing a change, the processes for a divisional or departmental tasks were improved through attempts and exploration. Moreover, each department under this division set up its own sub-processes, such as a sub-process for production, material purchasing and checking and testing and assembly. Consequently, during the period of a change, a process system was multiple levels, confirmed details and a smooth interaction between headquarters divisions and among the divisions was finally set up through repeated attempts and exploration. The third point, change enabled the recreation of new organizational routines. The first change from an international business trader to an LED manufacturer helped sign complex shift its organizational routines from high quality service to high quality production. While the second transformation from a product diversification strategy to a specification strategy furthered the change of its organizational routines from high quality production to high quality innovation. More specifically, the new routines reflected the common understanding of the company slogan, what is, we bring innovation and they give inspiration to customers, which is stressed the concept of quality, presenting dignity and innovation determining the future. Based on this understanding, all participants engage in cohesive behavior to perform the new organizational tasks. And the question here is, how did the change enable the recreation of organizational routines? Let's talk about it. The individual participants involved in the changes served to explore new knowledge and create new solutions beyond their existing cognition and boundaries and consequently were able to improve their qualities and skills for better realizing new tasks. Meanwhile, the participants gradually realized the inadaptability of the existing rules and regulations. To reduce negative feelings, the individuals sought to interact with others or sought help from others, especially those individuals with whom they had working connections. Through interactions, they were able to obtain more information on the change and to determine how to better complete their new tasks, and subsequently, they re-engaged themselves by finding their new rules. The frequency of these explicit forms of communication and interactions made all participants knowledgeable about changes, created their inner reliance on each other, and led to the emergence of a common understanding for the new context and the new joint tasks. More specifically, through the general information obtained in the interactions, participants were gradually able to develop an individual understanding of the rules of others, including their understandings, ideas, opinions, and actions for handling changes and new tasks, which allowed them to develop a sense of prediction and control. This facilitated the engagement of participants in role-taking role and the reformation of internal cohesion. Based on this, the participants were able to develop a joint suited understanding of the new context and the tasks, identify appropriate actions and align their individual lines of action accordingly with others. By doing so, they were able to develop a new self 
that reflected their new rules and the contribution to the new task. The formed common understanding of the new task supplied participants with mutually constant interpretations and evaluations of information, as well as reciprocal expectations concerning what actions were appropriate for the new situation. As an essential component of the execution of new routines, a common understanding facilitated the realization of compatible reciprocal behavioral expectations. Each participant were able to correctly expect that he or she would receive familiar sing signals from the others and would respond in a familiar ways, even without explicit communications. Consequently, cohesive action dispositions for new tasks emerged. The creation of a common understanding and subsequent action dispositions reflected the underlying change of the participants, cognition and behaviors, and the reformation of routines. In summary, the implementation of the strategic and structural change facilitated the recreation of a new stable state through activities such as trial, exploration, and interaction. Let's go to the discussion part, the last part in, that, in this presentation. Paradox of change and stability. First, we should talk about the interdependence between stability and change. And this study confirms the interdependence of the two contradictory elements, namely stability and change, and the development of a firm. The success of a change relies on existing stable mechanisms, while a change enables the firm to reach a new stable state. Stability enables the change by supplying security and consistency to ensure the continuity of the organization, offering reserved knowledge and skills and enabling commitment and the provision of resources for better realizing the change. When transforming from a product diversification strategy to a specification strategy, and from the line functional structure to the divisional structure, sign complex relied on, the, on existing institutions, processes, and organizational routines. Now, we will explore each one of these. First, in institutions. In institutions were able to reduce the perceived uncertainty of employees and their anxiety when confronting with the change enabling employees to trust the organization and to continue to explore new tasks. Consequently, the institutions were able to enable change rather than constraining it. Second, the existing processes, including the overall business processes and the working flows of each step or subtask supported the change by offering reserved capabilities, knowledge, skills, and principles for performing tasks. As a result, when employees were involved in a new environment, they could still rely on lessons retained as rules of thumb, informed guesses, norms, or models such as those provided by sub-problems solved previously to greatly reduce the need for trial and error and deal with new tasks, thereby economizing on the need for new cognition. The third, the existing organizational routines, that reflecting both a common understanding and cohesive action dispositions, release the top managers from their responsibility for managing only daily issues to support the realization of the unique goal of high quality and to consequently allocate core resources to support activities of improving quality. The routines also help the divisions to decrease the action time involved in a change, 
the removal of the pressure and the routines reduced the perceived uncertainty of divisional managers such that they were released from their divisional goals and were able to devote resources to realize their core tasks. Additionally, the routines helped to remove the employees' perceived uncertainty to increase their understanding of new tasks and enabled them to commit to and to provide resources for the realization of their individual tasks. In the other, on the other hand, change enables the recreation of new stable state. Through the repeated performance of new tasks, a new state, stable state, consisting of new institutions, processes, or organizational routines can be recreated. Through strategic change, Sign Complex was able to set up a mature institutional system involving a new general memorandum of association, clear division of responsibility and function descriptions, a division management system, a clear department responsibility and function description, department regulations as well as a new performance evaluation system. Additionally, the company was able to build up a process system with multiple levels, confirm details and smooth interactions between headquarters and the divisions and among the divisions. Moreover, reflecting the employees' common understanding of new tasks and new cohesive behaviors toward realizing these tasks, Sign Complex was able to shift its organizational routines from high quality production to high quality innovation. And variable mechanisms such as trial and error and exploration activities played an important role in facilitating the firm stability. Second part in the discussion is nature, nature of organizational change and organizational development. This is study on the strategic and the structural change of sign complex particularly indicates that the nature of organizational change is to help an organization reach through trial and error or exploration a new development stage with high efficiency because organizational change enables the establishment of a new state for a new environment or for the better in performance of new tasks it can consequently enhance and renew the capacity of an organization however the objective of a change is to break the existing stable state and then to set up a new one through collective efforts. Therefore, we can conclude that organizational changes are not isolated events aimed at replacing existing processes and institutions, management methods or concepts with new ones but a complicated continuous process to help organizations to evolve from existing states and to facilitate the recreation of new stable states. Moreover, organizational change reflects the nature of paradox in that it not only relies on stable mechanisms but also simultaneously attempts to establish a new state with new mechanisms to promote the development of an organization. The second point is organizational development. This study also confirms that the nature of organizational development lies in the paradoxical effects of both stability and the change. The development of an organization reflects a continuous process of efficiency improvement with the stability and the change as two basic elements. More specifically, an organization may reach a state of stability with the stability mechanisms of institutions, processes, and organizational routines. Then, it reaches a new state of stability through an organizational change or changes that break down existing stable mechanisms, but also maintaining continuity and establish a series of new mechanisms to create a new environment, better performance of tasks, and the pursuit of higher efficiency. 
the developing path of an organization consists of both change and stability, two elements that not only struggle for scarce resources but also depend on each other. An organization may implement several changes at the same time across departments and organizational levels, or an organization may experience a series of changes across de developing periods and even within one period. This indicates that the relationship between stability and the change may be one in which the two concepts intercross which is a relationship that is more complicated than the simple relationship described in the case of sign complex. Different types of a change may rely on the same existing staple mechanisms or naturally affect certain mechanisms. A new state of stability may be built up through a series of cross-department or cross-level changes or when some changes are dependent on existing mechanisms and others are trying to break them. Therefore, organizational development is a continuous and, compl and complicated process reflecting conflicting, interdependent and intercrossing relationships between stability and change. Here we can see in that figure here is the efficiency, this is efficiency, and this is time. This is a state for stability, stable institutions, stable processes, organizational routines, and change happens. Change in institutions, change processes, change organizational routines. To get to a new state of stability and another change, to get to a new state of stability and another change. And each time we have a change, we set up a new institutions, set up new processes, and set up new organizational routines. Let's talk about implications for theory. The researchers explore these implications in three points. The first one is about the paradox of stability and the change. This research confirms the paradox of stability and the change and clarifies their paradoxical relationship. Also, this research adopted the redefinition of contradictory elements as a con mutually constituted relationship in which each pool it contains the seeds of its opposite and is ontologically inesperable such that one does not exist without the other. And this research finds that the success of a change relies on stability, while a change enables a firm to set up a new state of stability. The results show different effects of stability and the change. In institutions, in institutions enable change by supply, supplying security and consistency. Processes support change with reserved knowledge and skills, while organizational routines help to enable commitment and the provision of resources to support the change. The second point is about organizational change theories. This research contributes to existing organizational change theories that extensively regard organizational change or innovation as a systematic project potentially requiring fundamental changes in the routine of the chain organization, in the routines of the organization. This is a study. This is a study confirms that an organizational change is able to is able to set up a new state for a new environment or for the better performance of tasks it can consequently enhance and renew the capacity of an organization. The third point it's about organizational development theories. This research contributes to the existing organizational development series by confirming that the nature of organizational development lies in the paradoxical effects of both stability and the change. And also 
This research finds that the development of an organization reflects the continuous process of efficiency improvement with an interaction between stability and change. Second, we have implications for practice. Here, the first point about adopting the product skill lens. And researchers say that adopting the product skill lens and making use of the synergy between stability and the change, Sign Complex was able to reach a rapid and smooth development process. The second point, why firms fail to change. Here, we can say that traditional Chinese firms tend to rely on stable mechanisms to concentrate their resources and attention on obtaining goals in high efficiency, while modern firms tend to rely on innovation and change to counter to environmental change and achieve a sustainable source of competitive advantage and long-term success. Okay? Okay. Consequently, one group of firms sticks to the existing stable mechanisms but review, refuse to change, while a large number of other firms actively engage in a change but neglect stability. However, this research reveals that stability and the change actually enable each other. This, remind, this reminds managers to rethink the relationship and to transform their either or decisions to coexisting decisions. When a large number of firms, especially middle and small ones in China, rush into the wave of organizational change, only a few succeed. The reason may lie in the overemphasis on pursuing differentiation and the growth through changes such as in realizing a new to the wallet business model, management method, structure, or process. In fact, only a very small number of firms are able to realize such new changes. This may be especially difficult for less developed firms in China. This research reveals that the nature of organizational change is to set up a new state of stability with high efficiency. Firms should pay attention to post stability and change by accepting, understanding, and using this product score relationship to realize their energetic, energetic effects. The last part in our presentation is limitations and the future directions. Findings need to be further confirmed through investigations of other organizations, as this re research has applied only on one organization. Second, future research may go further into more cultures and explore the different paradoxical relationships. And, Research focuses on stable mechanisms of institutions, processes, and organizational routines to explore the paradox. There may be other mechanisms such as habits, discipline, discipline, tight coupling, limits, commitment, control, and low variance, which were not included. Research only focuses on certain activities as carriers of change neglecting a deep investigation into search, mindfulness, redundancy, opponents, preoccupation with failure, imagination, and variety. And so we, we say that future research may involve more interactions of stability and change. The second point or the next point it's about there may be many cross-level or cross-departmental changes in any organization that struggle for resources and support of the same stable mechanism. So future research may go deeply into the concept of change 
to explore how stability and change enables each other dynamically. And the last one, more research methods. Considering the limitation of a case study, future research may adopt more methods such as re uh, regression analysis and the structural equation modeling to produce a deeper finding. Thank you everyone for your interest and please share your opinions with us and remember to subscribe in the channel to get more ideas that can inspire you. This is the end and goodbye.